when your talk is first, you know, you have a technical problems, but if you, your talk is last, you don't have a changes, so I prefer the first one. Uh, okay, so maybe four or five years ago, I gave my second presentation in my life in this conference, and it was about ACP security, and I suppose it was the first one presentation about ACP security in Troopers. Today we have five presentations about ACP security, the special track, and also the special workshop the day before. So I think it's so, something's changed in ACP security area, and now more people care about that, which is great. Uh, as for me, I'm uh, Alexander Polakov, the CTO of European Scan Company. Um, I'm also organizer of the, of the Zero Nights conference. It's a hardcore technical security conference in, uh, in Russia. Um, what else? You can follow us on Twitter, like uh, Zero Nights World. We're making different pictures of different people around the world with our merchandising, like flags and t-shirts and whatever. Uh, and my colleague Mitch Chistuhin, he's not here, unfortunately. Uh, he's very busy with his penetration testing activities and so on. Uh, but he wanted to say hello to everybody. Um, yeah, what we do is uh, security software for analyzing uh, SAP systems and, and so on. And I hope you already know all this stuff. Um, so we're talking about the SAP. Uh, and I think here in Germany, uh, near the SAP headquarters, uh, many people know what it is. So uh, how many of you don't know what is SAP? <laughs> Great, it's the first conference where nobody uh, <laughs> put their hands <laughs> on this question. Uh, okay, so it's the most popular uh, business application and we have like uh, three different uh, main platforms like uh, above stack, Java stack and the business subjects. Uh, as my talk is the first one, I think I can spend a little bit time on uh, discussing more general SAP security stuff, like uh, what kind of problems may happen if, if somebody breaks the SAP system. But I suppose you already know all this stuff, like uh, spionage and uh, sabotage and fraud. So all those scary things uh, may happen if you uh, don't care about the SAP security. Uh, a little bit about the SAP vulnerabilities. So by, by now we have like more than uh, 2,800, maybe now it's 900. Um, what can I say? Like uh, in uh, 2010, uh, it was a high peak when uh, SAP itself started to uh, do more research in SAP security. Uh, now we have a little bit less uh, vulnerabilities in SAP system every year, but I can conclude that they are more critical and more interesting. So, like all the low hanging fruits were found in uh, 2010, 2012, and now it's the time to find something uh, more interesting. Uh, and some other interesting things about uh, SAP security is that most people think that uh, it's only internal problem, but it's not. Uh, we, we made a research. Uh, we scan all the internet against the SAP uh, services. Uh, we just wanted to know how many uh, SAP services uh, exposed to the internet. And we were surprised that like, there are lots of uh, services exposed to internet, not only uh, you know, HTTP services like Portal and CRM and so on, uh, but also the management system, management services like SAP host control and message server, etc. Uh, so those numbers are like the percent of companies uh, which exposed one or uh, more different services, like 8% uh, of companies uh, expose SAP MMC service, which is a uh, uh, remote management uh, service. It's probably used by administrators to, you know, to configure uh, and to manage SAP uh, systems from home. But in reality, those services should not be exposed to the internet uh, because all of them have kind of vulnerabilities. Uh, some of them have uh, information disclosure issues, but some of them have uh, very critical like buffer flow vulnerabilities and message server and, and so on. So let's start with uh, my topic. And uh, today we, we have lots of uh, different 
uh, application servers uh, for SAP. Uh, so at the beginning it was only the SAP uh, ABAP, uh, NetWeaver ABAP application server. Uh, then, we f uh, then they create the SAP NetWeaver Java, then they acquire business objects and they have uh, business objects. Then they create HANA, uh, so based on one platform, SAP Fori. So all those uh, application servers are different and have their own problems. Uh, we are focused, uh, we decided to, uh, to focus only Java stack because, uh, you know, recently more, most of the research was focused on ABAP stack, so we're, we're always trying to find something, uh, something new. And the Java stack, uh, so the systems like Portal, Solution Manager, uh, XI, and that we were developing infrastructure uh, based on Java stack. Uh, we gave a talk about the SAP portal, uh, a little bit vulnerabilities in S uh, Solution Manager. Uh, we present the vulnerabilities in uh, e exchange infrastructure, like server side request forgery vulnerabilities. And now it's the time to talk about the NetWeaver development in infrastructure. Uh, so basically in two worlds, it's like a system where people develop uh, additional functionality to the J Java platform. Uh, it consists of different uh, components like design time repository, company build service, and, and so on and so on. Uh, let's look at, the, at this picture more in details. Uh, so we have uh, the component which is called design time repository. Actually, it's like an SVN service uh, for, for the software. So here all the source code of uh, uh, Java-based applications is stored. Uh, just the source code. Uh, then we have a component build service is, is where all the software is building. Uh, next one is the change management service. Uh, it's actually uh, where we're tracking all the, all the changes and keep versions updated and so on and so on. Uh, and a system landscape directory is like a, uh, the place where uh, we manage all, all, all the stuff together. Uh, and NetWeaver Developer Studio is uh, with a client application based on Eclipse where developers, uh, you know, connect to all those applications and can create the, write the software and, and so on. Uh, so all this stuff, uh, except the SDM, is like uh, typical development infrastructure. Uh, but SDM is Software Deployment Manager. So it's a system where we uh, deploy something, and then this system deploy this uh, on the uh, uh, production systems. So this one is the main component uh, where we need to take care, uh, because if somebody can get access to SDM, he can uh, upload the malicious code inside the uh, production systems. So the SDM, uh, we have the SDM GUI, SDM server, and the server is, can be connected to database and Java engine or file system and so on. So it's, it's a very simple application. You basically connect to the, uh, you have a, uh, Fed client written on Java. Uh, you connect to the server. You can upload uh, uh, execute uh, jar files or ER files, uh, and they will be uploaded. Only you can, or you can uh, deploy or undeploy the applications. Pretty simple. Uh, it can be executed as a standalone or uh, as a service. Or, in, or integrated. Uh, what else? We have uh, three different ports. Uh, like uh, HTTP port is just in some kind of information uh, not interesting. The admin port where you can remotely uh, turn off or turn on the SDM, and the GUI port, which is the main port for uh, uploading uh, everything. Uh, what else? It, the system can ha handle only one user in one time. Uh, so if you, tip, if you just uh, 
you know, have a username and a password and you log into this system, nobody can uh, log into the system except you. So it's a pretty simple denial of service attack. Uh, and there is only one user. There is only one user which is called admin. Uh, it's default user for everybody. Um, so this is how it looks like. Uh, the typical Java application. You can uh, see what kind of uh, things you deploy to server. Um, what kind of attacks we can uh, find here? So first of all, uh, there is one user, uh, so we can try to brute force the password. Uh, only one user in at, one, at one time, so we can uh, have a denial of service attacks. Uh, and another uh, funny issue, if you log in fails three times, so the server will be uh, disabled. So you can stop server by just three uh, uh, login uh, uh, attempts. Uh, so denial of service attack on this uh, system is very easy. You just don't need to do anything. Just send the simple packets and so on. Uh, and you can deploy the evil code, but you need to know uh, the username and the password and so on. The username you already know, it's admin. Uh, so you need to know the password. Uh, So you need to reverse engineer this software, and typically, if you have uh, like, you know, the web-based application, you have lots of software to do that, uh, like Burp proxy. So you can send the packets, change them, and do something, and uh, try to f uh, run some attacks. Uh, here we have the Java uh, client, and we have a custom protocol. It's not easy to intercept all the stuff, uh, and so on and so on. So. Uh, some problems, but it's not very big. Um, but we have, uh, but it's, it's based on the Java uh, version six, and we can uh, we have attach API, so we can attach to the uh, client process, and we can change uh, lot lots of things that actually we can modify all the client server calls. So that's how we can uh, you know try different uh, attacks. So what kind of uh, uh, vulnerabilities we found? Uh, yeah, the first, first of all, uh, if you just uh, uh, try to log in with incorrect password three times, as I told you before, so the system will shut down. Uh, the second uh, way to make a denial of service attack is to send this special packet. Uh, we have the, all the the, all the packets in this protocol is started with uh, 10 spaces. And, that was, and then the number of uh, like ID of the packets and then the XML, uh, XML packet. So this, this is a simple packet to shut down the server. You just send the shutdown request without authentication. Uh, and the system will shut down. Uh, the next vulnerability that we found is SMB relay. It's also the uh, the response uh, request without authentication. Uh, you send this uh, the file access request to some kind of remote uh, system, and if SCP is based on Windows, you can uh, execute like uh, SMB relay attack. Uh, this this uh, request is also without authentication. Uh, we found. Uh, a couple of more requests that can be executed without authentication, but they not you know you don't you can't do anything uh, critical with them. Uh, the prevention is uh, pretty simple. You, we have uh, there is an SCP node, uh, and there are also a couple of uh, security features for the new, the new for the SDM. Uh, okay, it was uh, denial of services pretty scary, but it's not what we are looking for. Uh, we have a more interesting attack. Uh, the attack is like uh, we compromise the, uh, uh, some SCP services, then we compromise the SDM. Uh, after compromising the SDM, uh, we compromise the operation system, and then we connect to the uh, SCP, the production SCP system. Because the, if we compromise the SDM itself, uh, we just can you know, upload the malicious code, but 
uh, maybe it will be uploaded to the production system, maybe not, so nobody knows. Uh, the most critical vulnerability in SDM is this one. Uh, it's the authentication process. Uh, actually, how it works, you, you have a Fed client and you enter your password. So the system uh, generate the hash of this password and then send this hash to the server. And then server compare the hash uh, with the hash stored in, in, the, in the file. So actually you don't need to know the password because authentication is going by the hash. So you, uh, what you need to do is uh, to find the hash. Uh, the first uh, way is pretty simple. You just can, uh, you know, the sniff uh, network because there are no, uh, in HDM, uh, it's just a raw packets without any encryption, without SSL, without anything. So you can sniff it, but it's not very interesting. Um, so your, your, your problem is to find the hash. If you find the hash, you can uh, authenticate in the server and you don't need to know the password. Um, and yes, if you look at the source code, you can easily decompile the source code because it's Java. So you can decompile it and you can find the uh, request like uh, create hash string. Uh, and the hash is stored in the file uh, which is called SDM repository uh, SDC. And this is the hash password. Um, so, so our mission is to find you know, the, the, this file so somehow to get access to this file. Uh, another problem is, uh, you know, in the old versions of SDM, uh, the password is pre-configured pre in the source code. There's this one, AP, API uh, SDM. So it's a default password, uh, but it only works in the, in the old versions of SDM. Uh, so let's suppose that we have a new version and we don't know the default password. Um, so what should we do? We need to uh, read this file, get password hash and use it uh, as a password and deploy the backdoor. Uh, how we can get this? Uh, actually there are many different vulnerabilities uh, which allowed us to get access to the file. Uh, like Operation OS Command Execution in CTC, uh, the vulnerability in Java stack, which we presented like uh, three years ago on the Black Hat. Uh, XML internal entity vulnerabilities also in the Java stack. You can use them to read the file. Uh, to traversal and portal or uh, MMC file read functions. A uh, lot of different stuff, but uh, all this stuff is already uh, was presented, so let's check something new. Uh, let's look at the another service uh, which also work in the uh, in the Java stack. Uh, this service called uh, SAP Log Viewer. Uh, SAP Log Viewer standalone actually. Uh, it can be deployed uh, within diff uh, on the different ports. Uh, And the, the funny thing that you can connect to, if, if you have a log viewer standalone, not just a log viewer which is installed uh, with the uh, SAP itself, or with the Java, Java stack itself, if you run the network standalone, you can connect to this uh, log viewer without authentication. Uh, so you can read uh, the log files uh, from local uh, server, you can uh, read the log files from uh, external systems and, and you can uh, also like register your own file, uh, log file to read. Uh, so our attack is very easy. You connect, we're connecting to the log viewer and we register uh, this file as a log file. So after that the log viewer uh, allowed us to, to read this file. So we connect to log viewer, uh, register this file, uh, get the hash, um, and then we need to n use, you know, some kind of um, some kind of tools like a Java snoop uh, to change the hash that uh, we enter uh, to the to the 
to the hash that uh, system use. Uh, so the, the the biggest problem of that is uh, is prevention, because um, the vulnerability is in the client server uh, you know authentication process. So to patch this issue, you need to uh, change the you know the the client and the server in one time. Uh, so you need to stop all the business processes and to you know to rebuild all the system and so on and so on. So it's not just you know like uh, implement the SAP node and it works. Okay, so uh, when we get access to the SDM, what we can do? We can uh, uh, look at the different uh, components which are installed. Uh, there is also one issue. Uh, when you connect to the SDM, you can deploy different, uh, different uh, applications. Uh, you can deploy them uh, from your workstation or from the server workstation. Uh, by default, you only can deploy from the inbox uh, um, folder. Uh, but all the restrictions you know, are on the client side, again. So you can use the Java Snoop and uh, you can use the directory traversal attack so that you can uh, get access to all the, all the folders, not just the inbox folder. So you can read all the information from the server. Uh, you also can undeploy any application which may lead to the denial of service attack. Or you can deploy your own application uh, and insert the backdoor in the system. So uh, we use like a default application, uh, uh, SQL Monitor. It's a default application. I don't know the purpose of this application because uh, in SAP Java stack you have about 1,200 uh, different default applications. So nobody cares if something was, will be changed in one of them. Uh, so we deploy just a copy of this application but with uh, uh, GSP shell. And then you can execute any operation system command on the server and so on. Uh, Okay, we have access to the SDM, uh, but it's, it's just you know like a software deployment system. It's not a business system. It's uh, the system don't store any uh, business related data and so on. Um, but the SDM uh, use use a database uh, connection information and the. Uh, and the SDM connects to the Java server, uh, to production Java system to, uh, you know, to deploy all the things. So the SDM should know the password to connect to the production system. And this password is stored in uh, security storage. Uh, and security storage is located here. We have uh, two files in uh, sector, uh, sector properties and, and sector key actually. Uh, so we, ca we can get access to uh, the Java stack using our uh, backdoor. Uh, there is the sex store properties file, which looks like this. Uh, we have a hashed password. Oh, we have encrypted password. And we have And then slide is missing. Okay, so uh, we have such sex store properties file uh, in this folder, and we have the sex store key file in the same folder, and the key is used to uh, encrypt this, uh, you know, encrypt this uh, the password. So if we have access to uh, operation system, we have encrypted password and we have a key, so we have we can decrypt this password and get access to uh, to production SAP system. And then after we have access to production SAP system, uh, in most cases it's the SAP portal because uh, uh, the Java stack is mainly used for the SAP portal. We can uh, 
have some kind of post exploitation, like a e pretty easy example, we can get access to a uh, portal and run the search and search for the password. And the SAP portal is the place where all the uh, where the people store all the information about internal um, infrastructure and so on. So you can easily find different documents uh, which have a password for the other systems and so on and so on. And all the critical information. This one is a screenshot for, from the one production system so you don't see any details but you can find like uh, the root password is blah 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 and some kind of other password is blah blah blah. So uh, we easily found a couple of documents like doc and PDF documents in portal which store the password for uh, other systems. And so now I, can sh I will show you the, the full demonstration of the multiple stage attack. That will Okay, let's say we have a SAP portal which we want to break. Uh, we're trying to enter the username and the password, which is, of course, doesn't exist. Uh, then we run the uh, software deployment manager, uh, trying to connect to the uh, SDM host uh, without the password, of course. Uh, it's not working, and you see this, uh, you know, uh, uh, message uh, that if we will log in again, uh, the system will be will shut down. So we run uh, the log viewer uh, standalone on the server. So now we are running the log viewer client uh, and we connect into the server, specify the host name and the log viewer port and uh, we select the protocol uh, standalone so that we don't need to enter the username and the password. Connect. Uh, then we uh, add the log file and we enter here the name of the log file, like SDM repository SDC. And after that we can, we can read this file. So we can copy uh, the hash from, from the file. Copy it to the clipboard. And then we're trying to connect to the SDM again. Uh, we run the Java snoop. Uh, to intercept the, uh, the password when we, s when we send it to the server. So we're intercepting the, the login request. And we put our hash instead of uh, this hash. So now we successfully authenticated as, as an admin in SDM. So you can see we can uh, deploy applications, undeploy, uh, view logs, uh, and so on. So let's go to the deployment. The first one, uh, we, can, we can browse the uh, system server sites, but you know, we can see only uh, inbox folder and nothing, nothing else. Uh, so what we can do is to intercept this, uh, this request. We 
we intercept this request and then we're trying to uh, read this again. And we have a string like uh, inbox. So we can input like zero to traversal. And after that, we can uh, get access to uh, all the folders on the server. So we can read all the, all the files and all the stuff which is deployed on the system. Uh, but our mission is not this. Our mission is to deploy our application. So it's much easier. We just select a local file browsing, uh, select uh, one of the uh, ER files which we prepare. It's SQL trace. We just took the SQL trace from the SCP, uh, put the uh, JSP shell and pack it again, and now we upload it on the server. So we're calling this URL again, because before it was not found, because we don't implement it. So now we implement it on the server. It's successfully deployed. So, and now we have our JSP shell where we can execute any, any operation system command like ipconfig, so on, but what we're interested in is to get access to files like sex store properties. Uh, we have a password hash and sex store key. We have a key and we have our tool which can decrypt for a uh, password if we have a key and uh, properties. Uh, we have a key and uh, uh, encrypted password. So we execute this uh, sextor cryptor and successfully decrypted uh, our file. <laughs> okay. So now we can get this, you know, user. Uh, now we can connect as administrator to the portal and copy copy this password and well say the password is expired so actually the password is the real then we need to you know the change uh, change this password to the new one uh, and we'll be successfully authenticated uh, is in the system as administrator. So that's how we can get access to the uh, Java stack, even if it's fully you know secured. We can go through the SDM, uh, upload the backdoor to the SDM, and then go to the uh, to the production system itself. So how we can I conclude all this stuff? Uh, you know, we still have issues in different uh, SCP services. Of course, the SCP uh, became more and more secure. Uh, so what you can do is regular, do regular security assessments, and you need to care about the all the three different areas. I mean, the the platform security, all the vulnerabilities, the segregation of duties, and the source code. Because if you have you know problems in uh, in one area. Uh, you, you still can be compromised. So uh, you need to care about the, all, the, all the areas, uh, the segregation of duties, the source code, security, the vulnerabilities, misconfigurations, and so on. And I would like to thank uh, the SAP uh, security response team uh, with whom we work together on the, you know, on, on the ways how we can patch uh, uh, this vulnerability. Uh, and if you're interested in uh, more of our research, you can follow us on uh, on Twitter and uh, 
look at the presentations on our website and our next presentation will be in Sao Paulo, uh, besides Sao Paulo, uh, a small workshop about the practical SCP pen testing. Uh, so thanks for listening and I hope you enjoy it and if you have any questions I can answer them. Yeah? I have a question. Do you see any of this in any of the log files? Uh, what? Do you see any of your attack vectors and mechanisms that you use in any of the log files of the attack service? Ah, uh, okay. The SCP, I mean, you can include the audit log, yes, no, or whatever. Do you see anything of that on the system? It, d it, depends, it depends on the vulnerability. If you... Um, Okay. So the SDM itself don't have any logs. So if you if you connect to the system, uh, because the, you have only one user uh, admin, so nobody knows who connected to the system. And even if you uh, see that somebody connected, you can understand. You don't understand. So what's happening here? And as for the other issues. Uh, it depends on how you and how you enable the logging because uh, you can find that there is uh, so when you upload the shell uh, if you have a HTTP logs you can find like the access to a uh, specific URL but you don't know what kind of URL attacker use and uh, uh, where you, he will upload this uh, the shell code so, if you, I mean, it's 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 possible to uh, to find this attack, I suppose, if you enable different types of logs and do some kind of correlation, uh, and so on. But uh, by default, you will not be able to to find this. Yeah. yeah? Uh, does it create an uh, transport in the transport log? I mean, usually. If you deploy something from development to production, there should be a, um, one or several transports. So if I monitor my transports, uh, would I detect the one uh, with malicious code? You're talking about the uh, ABAP transports, or the? Yeah. Uh, but it's 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 a completely different type of uh, of the system. You, in the ABAP, you have a transport management system and so on, and it's a. And this one is only for the Java and updating Java stack. So the two separate uh, systems uh, that work separately. Yeah. Yeah, exactly.